So that that record deal with Flip Records that led to your debut major label album, Dysfunction. So that's in uh, 1999. There was three singles. So you had Just Go, Mud Shovel, and Home. And that that album went on to have a tremendous amount of success, but it didn't explode out of the gate. It was kind of a slow burn. It was, uh, you know, eight months and then it went gold. And then, you know, a, a year after the release, it goes platinum. And then after the success of, of Break the Cycle and 14 Shades of Grey, it ends up going double platinum. My question is, do you think it's a good thing that that album was a slow burn to success um, to help you adjust to that level of fame and success? Uh, can you imagine having the Break the Cycle success right uh, out the gate and maybe that would have, you know, the band would have imploded or something? Yeah, I think uh, the... Uh, break the cycle um, if it happened well that obviously dysfunction led to break the cycle however um, yeah I don't know how that would have been man that, you're right that would have been uh, I don't know it, but I think it was great the way we we kind of came up and you know it was kind of gradual and then it you know it peaked and it hit big with the, with the break the cycle and uh, so on and so forth what what was it like hearing your songs on the radio for the first time? I mean, maybe you got some radio play with Tormented, but for sure the three singles on on uh, Dysfunction were were main mainstays, top ten hits. Some of them on uh, on rock radio. Yeah, I actually played in a uh, a couple bands before, and I've heard myself on the radio, but not with that kind of production that we had. Um, and also, you know, with the backing that we had behind it, it was it was awesome, man, to just hear Stain, like, you know, for the first time. It's actually coming home from a beer league hockey game. Uh, I was driving home. I'm like, oh, my God, here, you know, that was pretty neat. That's awesome. So I remember being 14 years old. I'm in high school. I was giving bass lessons to a to a girl and one day when i went over she played um mud shovel which is known for the bass line and yes. she goes hey i want to learn this song and that was actually my introduction to stain so uh, I, I you know i got the album to learn the song and you know i just i remember kind of what jumped out to me was like the the very active and aggressive drum playing uh you know obviously aaron's unique voice there was the um the unique guitar playing so the 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 riffs and the harmonics and the tasty bass riffs like you know johnny on mud shovel uh yeah. my, my question about that is mud shovel was actually on tormented uh but you know a, a lower quality version a little a little rougher sounding um what was the decision to have that as the one song that you would carry over from Tormented, have it on Dysfunction? Did you think that if it had a better recording, uh, some slight changes to the arrangement to make it a little more accessible, that that, that could be a hit? Because that was the breaks, breakthrough song for, for Steve. Right. Yeah, I, I suppose that could have been the case. Yeah. Um, but the production surely adds uh, so much to the song and, you know, we were pretty lucky. So going from dysfunction to break the cycle, <clears throat> we also had that live version of Outside with, with Fred on it, which kind of carried us into break the cycle. So that that um that song was huge. It was huge. And uh and then it's been a while, you know, so on and so forth. But um yeah, Mud Shovel's just uh that's an old that's an oldie. I mean, we, that was one of the, that's not the first one, obviously tormented, but um, yeah, that was always one of my favorites too. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. I mean, that song came out so long ago and, and streaming is, is a newer, you know, a newer technology. That song has a hundred million spins just on Spotify. So there's probably the same amount on Apple music and the others. Mm -hmm. How crazy is that after all these years, you know, starting from scratch with streaming long after that song came out, still has a hundred million plays yeah i didn't even know that until you just mentioned it but wow that's that's pretty amazing yeah yeah it's unbelievable yeah. um the so there's a a hidden track on that album called excess baggage uh is how do you decide if a song should be an actual song on the album in order or to hide it in as a hidden track where where how do you decide that 
I don't know. Whoever started the whole hidden track thing, that's all it really was. Because corn was, had some hidden tracks. It was a thing, right? Limbiscuit probably well, had some. Corn did. Corn, I think it was corn who did it. And there was a few. Oh, Deftones did it, I believe. There was a few bands that had like that. I, it was kind of, I don't know. It was just a little a phase in, in music that um, and production of CDs and so on and so forth that you know, you let the thing play when you fall asleep and all of a sudden, whoa, you hear this song, you know, come like 12, 13 minutes after the last song. So it that, that just I, reminded I, me, I, I forgot about this until right now, but when Korn's album Follow the Leader came out, I remember yeah. buying it, playing it. And I thought I had a broken copy because the first, I don't know, 13 or 18 tracks are just three seconds of silence. So they have it where it's track one, there's nothing, three seconds, track two, three seconds. It goes all the way up to like 18 and then the album starts. And I thought I, I had a broken record until I let it play all the way through. Yeah, I remember something like that. And I, th I think they changed that because it was kind of like, all right, this is annoying now, <laughs> you know, but um, but yeah, I, I, I vaguely remember that though. Was the song Excess Baggage, because that's that's a very raw acoustic song, is that oh, yeah. kind of a, a, a precursor to songs like Outside and It's Been a While? Like it's it's a projection of what might be coming, not just the, the really heavy stuff from the earlier albums. That wasn't the thought going into it, I don't believe. Um, but if it was, then cool. I mean, uh, other than that, it was just the extra track. It's only in looking back that we can kind of put those pieces together. Kind of just try something out, make it a little different. I don't know. Uh, you know, that whole hidden track thing, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So you had My mentioned... track is usually silence. <laughs> yeah, you had, you had mentioned the song Outside. Yeah. Is, is I mean, it's crazy. It's just on the Family Values Tour in 1999... Aaron's going out for for an encore decides to play this old song he had where the lyrics weren't were never finished Fred Durst joins him two years later that becomes yeah. a hit on radio the same song that was already done two years ago yeah. becomes a hit on a massive number one hit on radio and and that hit comes out just like two or three months before your next album like the timing couldn't be better uh is outside the most important song in Stain's discography maybe it's been a while is there as well, but is outside up there? I would say outside is what launched. It's been a while. So, um, yeah, it, it, uh, that, you know, when you put it like that, yeah, it really kind of is one of our most important songs because, you know, because of that live thing. And, uh, oh, hold on. My, my... I thought you only had a dog, but there's a cat coming in. Yeah, there's a cat too. Hey, get out of the way. This is this is real life. This is what the people want. This is this is live TV, folks. Um, so that yeah, I do think that is one of our. It probably is our most important song, though. 